On this episode of Talking Beards, we're joined with Bill Baduski, the VP of the BMCNC Greensboro. We talk about what we feel the current state of the beard community is. From competitions to club sizes, we talk about different ways we think we can gain more members, keep more members interested, and have more members participating in events, meetings, and competitions. There's so many great ideas that you can get out of this episode, so make sure you listen to the end, because this is Talking Beards. Hello, my name is Scott Sakura, and I am the Beardcaster. You are listening to Talking Beards. You can find out more information by going to talkingbeards.com or thebeardcaster.com. Make sure you go subscribe to the podcast wherever you subscribe to podcasts at. Also, make sure you go to Facebook and find us there and watch us live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST, which stands for Eat Salty Toads. You also can watch us live at talkingbeards.com. Don't forget to interact with us live in our chat room each week as we do our show live. We answer questions, we talk to people, and we have a great time. Yeah, we do. So let's dive right into this week's episode and go. Okay, we are live. Oh, we are live. Whoops. Hi. Are we like, like how live are we? Uh, super live. Like more live than we've ever been. This is the most live we have ever been. Ever. Ever. You sound so narcissistic tonight. Shut up. <laughs> you're you're the narcissistic. I I don't know. I think you're the narcissistic one. I think we both are. I think this is gonna be the most subpar show we've ever done. Ever. They all are subpar. Every oh. single one. Okay, this will be the best subpar show we've ever done. Oh, it's going to be because we're going to have a really awesome topic tonight. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell anyone yet. Yeah, because no one can read. So no one knows. Look, no at Matt Sohn says we're Motest. Is that, like oh. a Mo- is that like a Motown band? Yeah, we're pretty much uh, like the Motesters. Hey, guess what, everyone? We are currently live at TalkingBeards.com. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Brian Polka Dotted Alpaca is here. Oh my gosh. I saw him this weekend. Oh my God. Is it time? Are we there yet? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get back to where I can make the picture go away. Okay. I like that picture though. Ooh. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. We, hey, we are Talking Beards Live. Talking beards right? live. Yep, we are a uh, live. A uh, live. Yeah. So this is going to be episode number thirty with the one and only Bill Badusky from Sandusky. From, from Sandusky. Uh, yeah. So tonight's topic, we're going to talk about the uh, ways to ideas and ways to grow the beer community. Yeah, and right. the, and pretty much the the state of the beard community because as uh, Aaron and I like the fifty first state. Yeah, well, kind of, sort of like that. Oh, um, oh, okay, go ahead. Like the district of, like, oh. you know, like Washington D.C. This is the Washington D.C. of beard stuff. Beard. So, right. but yeah, no, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, oversaturation of competitions and the toll that we feel at least that we're seeing around the country on how it's uh, affecting club uh, morale and club uh, people joining clubs. So we're going to have a lot to talk about tonight. A lot of really cool stuff. So, Hey, Matt Gattig is here. He doesn't really tune in that much, but what's up, buddy? Goatee from the West Coast. Awesome. Hello, yep. Matthew. Hello. Oh, Matthew. My bad. Matthew. Yeah, so. Matthew uh, Battlestar Gattaca. Battlestar. <laughs> uh, last week's big trivia winner, Robbie Holsenback, says, "Wait a minute, wait a minute for what? You well, just just wait a minute, you know." Wait. Jason Schaefer says, "Dirty thirty. I don't yeah, know what that means. Said, 
This is our 30th episode. Oh. Dirty 30 episode number dirty 30. Look at what Tyler Hill says. Oh shit. Scott means business. No sleeves. The guns, I know. Are, the I, guns I are about out. It. I should have freaking went and. I wanted to have, up. I wanted to have easy access to my, uh, my war wound <laughs> from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to talk about your wounds. Yeah. So, so. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's uh, go ahead and hop on into this so we can get started. Cause we got a lot of funny topics to talk about. I am Aaron D. Johnston. I am your <laughs> narcissistic co-host of Talking Beards every Tuesday. And, hey. you know, I'm well, always here. So, you, wait a minute. You know who I am. Yeah, you do. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Scott Sakura. You, you can find me at thebeardcaster.com. I do podcasting all about beards, mustaches. It's all tied in with Talking Beards. So, if you guys are listening to this, make sure you hit that. Uh, well, listening to it and watching it, but... Um, make sure you guys are hitting that share button right now because I know all of you, all the people that are in this chat room should easily just go to the bottom there and hit share. Yeah, I know we're going to get all these really great comments. I'm going to put a shirt on later. No, uh, take your shirt off. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, yeah, if you guys are watching on Facebook right now, hit that share button so everyone can watch along with us as we do this great show because there's going to be tons of really awesome information in this show and we're going to help everyone out there who's in a club who wants to start a club um who already has a club and they're struggling we're going to try to give you ideas and uh different techniques and stuff on how to get your club a little bit more efficient and get more people involved and to gain more members so that's what we're talking about tonight so but we already did talk about that aaron go ahead is one of the tips you're going to give us to wear a shirt with no sleeves? No, one of the tips is this one right here. Highlighter. <laughs> what? Highlighter. Highlighter. There you go. That's my tip. Look. Don't do that. Dude, I'm hardcore. It's an X. Wow. <laughs> you just drew an X on your skin with a highlighter. Speaking this of Tisha Chicken Bread. Oh, hey, we can we can do her thing real quick. We can do her thing. <laughs> you shut up. You knew what I was talking about. So, no, I don't. Breaking news. Breaking news from the uh, world of Whiskerinas. Tisha Chicken Bread made a beard with a mustache. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. She's she's no longer a, a whaler. She is a full-fledged, full-beard Whiskerina now. Congratulations, Tisha. You've officially made it. Look at hot sister, former hot sister, former hot sister. <laughs> Polka dotted alpaca says, "How about wearing sleeves with no shirts? How about shut your mouth?" <laughs> sleeves with no shirts. That's just dumb. How are they going to stay up? We're going to tape them up or whatever. Tape them. Obviously, everybody knows that. Yeah, tape them. But uh, we got to dive right into. Guess what? Guess what time it is? Uh, it is eight oh six. It is time for the BS Button Beard Bulletin Board. What was that? So if you guys are at the Talking Beards Facebook page at the very underneath the banner at the top, it'll say visit group. Click on that. Make sure you joined. It's you know, you can join it or not join it, but make sure you join. It's it is the place for you. It is the place for all of you people who are with us tonight. Anyone who's uh, listens to the show, make sure you find the BS button beard bulletin board because it is a place for you to post about the things that are important to you, events, birthdays, anything, anything that's, uh, has anything. anything. It doesn't even have to be about the, about the, uh, um, beard community, but I mean, it is a beard bulletin board, you know, so we, we like to talk about competitions and stuff in here. So, Oh, here you go. Here's a, here's a DC Daniel Cunningham. Look at that. Getting getting pizza discounts because he has a beard. Oh wow. Look at that. Wow. Good job, DC. See, that Wait just that just happened. He couldn't get it up on the BS button beard bulletin board fast yeah, enough. So. This is literally breaking news. So breaking. thank you. Uh this Viking just in. Pizza Company in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Hey, did you know that's where they made the uh the car, the Saturn? Before it was discontinued, it was made in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Well, so if you guys are happen to be in Springfield, Tennessee, make sure you go to the Viking Beard Company. They will give you uh, five dollars off your pizza. If yeah, you everybody beard. has a beard. Go in there and say DC Cunningham uh, sent you and said that they will give you five dollars off if you have a beard. Alan Alan Eckert says, "Hey, hey, 
Hey, hey. he must be oh, going. Hey, Alan. This hey. must be he hey. must be Fat Albert. So, all right. So, first order of business on the BS button. Ooh, look at this. A friend wants to join this group. I wonder who it is. Ooh. Who could it be? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, first first post here from Don Child Ress. Mm, good old Don Child Ress. Child Ress. She shared an event. She had she says she had a blast at Beard Brawl in February 2019. She's looking forward to the March 2020 event. We should all come out to the Beard Mob Louisiana presents backyard Beard Brawl 20. That sounds like a big fight. Why would people want to go to a big fight? People are going to get hurt. I don't know, but I would uh, highly suggest everyone go to that event as well. Is it putt putting? Uh, I don't know. It looks like Maybe. it's putt putting. It There's... looks like putt putting, but uh. I think it's just a not a big fight oh, wow. at a putt putt golf course. So this could be so the one time when we were watching what was it holy moly holy moly putt putt show thing. So we should if they're do uh putt putt there, which I think they are, we should both go and we could do a commentary of people playing putt putt. This is great. Hey, look at Scott McFreckles here. Good old Scott McFreckles. That's right. We went to school together. Ooh. Hey. 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 Uh, yeah, so we could we yeah, we could do commentary of that. That sounds great. I like this idea. Say yes. Don't say yep. 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 See? Look at that. Full 18 holes. Whoa. That's what she said. That is what she said. <laughs> Full those 18 holes. Yeah. Uh oh. What is this? What happened here? Mr. Chicken Bread missed my mustache day butt on TB. Ooh, oh, jeez. He missed a day butt. <laughs> on TB, tuberculosis. Oh. <laughs> Freaking Mr. Chicken Bread. I know, Chicken Bread screwing it up. Okay, Aaron, you posted this. The hey. the GoFundMe for Madison Rowley. Well, tell me yeah, a little I bit about that. Uh, I don't know much about it. Uh, Madison's going to shave his beard off and go to the GoFundMe and you can vote to, you know, I think you give money and then it allows you to vote on a category and then everyone should just put him in chops. And I believe he's going to do it right before nationals in Chicago. I think that's the plan. Yeah. So whatever category that people donate the most money to is the style that he will cut his beard into and compete at. So. So, yeah, yeah, everyone cho- gives medicine money and vote for chops. Thank you. The next item of business, we have something from the uh, Working Class Beards PA representing at American Legion Beard Competition from Mr. Alan Eckert, who said, hey, 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 earlier in the show, if you were just getting here. Um, I saw lots of pictures online about that. So we got we got some uh, pictures here of some of the some of the participants uh, looks cool. So you go over to the BS button beard bulletin board and you guys can check these pictures out. I saw this the other day. This I thought was really funny. Yeah, uh, I'm really excited about seeing this movie. Yeah. So anyway, someone took all these old pictures of Mr. Rogers and put beards on them, which is so funny. <laughs> Look good with a beard. Yeah, he does. He should have always had a beard. So yeah, like I said, go over to the uh, BS button beard bulletin board and scroll through there. You'll find this. Uh, and then, uh, you, you put this one in here, the uh, Smoky Mountain Tube and Raft, Cherokee, North Carolina. What about that? Is that just something to do? I think it's just something to do. Uh, Josh Barney's kind of trying to put something together for bearded people to do and go hang out and, you know, be together and be social without a, a competition aspect to it. So, you know, maybe a bunch of people will, you know, go rafting and float down the river. We have some breaking news in currently. Um, breaking, breaking news. Um, Andrew Matson supports whalers. We don't know if this is true. This is just coming in currently. We haven't had time to uh, check to see if this news is correct. Uh, we'll, it's we'll get from it. Sean Logie, so it's probably fake. Oh, he's fake news. Yeah, he's fake news. Uh oh. Mr. Rogers should not be that attractive. Says. Wow. So, bre- breaking news Sarah Willis is a. Attracted to Mr. Rogers. Oh, my. Wow. I know. That's pretty quick. Uh, okay. So then, and let me see. Uh, uh, Garrett Garrett posted, uh, we are proud 
to announce we are teaming up for the second year with the Fort Nisqually Living History Museum to bring you the second battle of the Brigade Beards. Uh, it is August 10th, is Saturday, August 10th, at the Battle of the Brigade Beards. Um, if you need more information about that, please go over to the BS Button Beard Bulletin Board. Make sure you guys join the group so then you guys can see this stuff and you guys can easily uh, uh, check out this stuff after we talk about it. If anything you hear, you want to check out. So, uh, And then... Crystal well, Davis says, Who isn't att- attracted to Mr. Rogers? Um, I am. I am not attracted to Mr. Rogers. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, oh. who's Mr. Rogers? Rod, Rod- Roger. Rodgers. Rodgers. Mr. <laughs> Rodgers. Is. And then for those of you who are wondering who won the Who Did It Better between Rose and Jack and Aaron and Scott, of course we won. <laughs> Aaron and Aaron Scott. Thank you. I yeah, know. Why why would you th- not think it was us? But so there you go. That was us. that was the BS Button Beard Bulletin Board. Make sure you go over there. Um, if you need buttons, hit up BS Buttons on Facebook. They will get you some buttons. Ben will make you some sweet ass buttons, such as like this one. Ooh, Ooh. Scott Sakura. Who's that? I don't know. Who I is don't that? know. No one knows who he is. No one does. Look for that on a shirt sometime in the near future. Ooh, uh, I need it on a fanny pack. Don't we all need it on a fanny pack? You're a fanny pack. You're you pack your fanny. I do. Trend Bard is better than Whaler. Okay. So That's, there you go. <sighs> so what else is going on? So we have about five more minutes before our guest comes in. Would you like to tell everyone about your adventures in droning? Well, <laughs> well, let me tell, tell the other quick story first. So, uh, the child, oh, I'll skip yeah. one. Go so the, the child and I went, we decided we were bored the, the other night and uh, we're like, oh, what can we do tonight? Oh, we're going to, uh, the Cleveland Indians have a minor league team outside of Cleveland called the Lake, or the Captains. And uh, so we decided to go to the Captains game, got good tickets right behind the first, or right behind the uh, bench on the first base side. You know, we could put our feet up on there. And uh, so we decided to go to the game. I walk in the door and I get like accosted by all these people that, um, that work for the captains are like, are are you here for the beard contest? And I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And the guys are like, yeah, come over here, sign these release forms. So they had me signing all these, like all this paperwork and stuff. And no one's telling me what's going on other than, am I there for the beard contest? And I'm like, dude, I'm just here to watch the game. I don't, you know, Mike Wilson's here. Hello, Michael. I miss you. And I love you. But uh, yeah, so they start telling me like, oh yeah, well today is like, they're doing uh something about like history of sports in the Cleveland, blah, blah, blah. And this night they were uh, celebrating um, beards. Beards. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So yes, yeah, so I'll go do it. So they tell me to come down to this area at a certain time. So I go down to the area at a certain time and there's like a whole bunch of guys there who have like these small little beards. And as soon as everyone sees me, they're like, Oh, I guess we're this is stupid. I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this. You're going to win. And I'm like, ah, dude, dude, Oh, freaking Kloss. He had to come in and ruin everything. Oh, God, freaking Kloss. But, uh, yeah, so they march us out onto the baseball field at the third inning, and, of course, it was a crowd. Whoever yelled the most for whoever, so I was the first guy up. And, you know, of course, my, my I used don't you know who I am, you know, and everyone just was kind of I mean, like. As you should. Yeah, I'm like, don't you guys know who I am? So, but, You're you know. Like, Scott Sakura, the beard caster. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so the crowd went crazy. Ah, and then everyone else, like, they brought the next guy. <laughs> you know, and then, of course, the last guy at the very end was fucking Santa Claus. The, the ringer. Yeah. Santa, yeah. his little beard. And as soon as they bring Santa Claus up, the crowd goes crazy. So then they have to rub it in some more and be like, okay, number one and number eight, go and stand up in the front. So I'll... We go up front again, and everyone goes ah, for me. And then Santa comes up again, and they're like, ah, ah. "Santa won, stupid." But that sounds stupid. I know. So they, but they did give me fireworks at the end of the show as a consolation prize, which was really cool. So, did you set them off yet? No, they did them for me. There, they were they were really good fireworks. But they gave them to you. Yeah, they did. Did they're you like, get to take them home after they exploded them? No, Aaron, shut up. 
<sighs> now you're just being dumb. I'm just not adding up here. But you want to hear about explosions, though. So here's yeah. here's my other story real quick. So I was out mowing yesterday, and I got uh, – I was mowing, like, you know, mowing. And, yeah, uh, I was mowing. Your, did you have your shirt on with no sleeves? No, I was not. I was wearing a regular shirt. And oh, okay. uh, so all of a sudden, I started feeling like burning on my back. And I'm like, oh, what that – you know, I thought maybe, like, I don't know, something got pinched or something. And it starts – getting hotter, burning more, burning more. Next thing I know, I'm like, shit, I'm getting attacked by hornets. So I like go run to the house and everything. And I'm like, ah, you know, I get, I get, it's like all these bite marks on my back. And uh, so I'm like, oh, thinking about this, I'm like, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy. What do guys do? They try to taunt things. They want to make it worse. So my son and I go out there with Nerf guns, but I'm like, yo, we got to send the drone in there. So I get the drone out. Yeah, you're right. Scott does think Santa's stupid. Um, I should have ran out there and tackled him. You should have. Santa's dumb. <laughs> no, I guess a handful of sparklers I threw up in the air. Uh, DG. But uh, yeah, so, so I decided to fly the drone, and I, I took the drone like like right up like this close to it, and you know, as I could see up in the hole and everything. So then we're to, we decided that we were going to start shooting it with the Nerf gun. Well, so that was pretty sweet. So we shot this thing with the Nerf gun, and they were going all crazy and everything. As with the Nerf gun, yeah, nothing could go wrong. No, nothing did. Absolutely. So I do, I do recommend if you find a huge like hornet's nest, go shoot get a Nerf gun nerf and start shooting it. <laughs> um, Great idea. Yeah. So today I was like, all right, this time I'm going to shoot it with the Nerf gun first, and then I'm going to send the drone in. So that's what we did. We shot it. We got them all stirred up, all crazy and stuff. And so I took the drone off, and I parked it like right up there. And, dude, these things were attacking it, like, and they were kept getting caught in the propellers, and there was, there was body parts flying everywhere. It was, like, just all crazy. And the more that happened, the more we're coming out and going at the darn drone. And finally they took the drone out. They took they took the drone to the ground. It got stuck in the bush because so many of them attacked it that they, the propellers got all gummed up and then it landed. And And it's been about two hours since I did this, and I just checked before we started, and they're still attacking this damn drone. And it's just been sitting there for two hours. I can't believe they were able to take it down. That's That's crazy. I know, but, you know, but that just brings me to what we really need to talk about tonight. Bill Badusky from Sandusky. Bill. Hey, I'm a Cleveland boy, all right? Parma, actually. See, close it's enough. That's almost Sandusky. That's, yeah, that's basically that's right. Everybody knows that. But uh, have you ever flown a drone into a hornet's nest? I have not. Um, I am a pre-K teacher uh, by profession. And uh, so I go and fly a drone around the classroom with uh, a bunch of four and five year old. So I, I guess it would be kind of the same, the same attack uh, formation, but uh, that definitely is a hold my beer scenario, I believe. <laughs> so, so you're yeah. saying when you fly the drone around the classroom, they dive into it and body parts go flying everywhere. <laughs> um, I will neither confirm nor deny those allegations. That's an amazing story. It hasn't shown up on the news yet. So we're still good. <laughs> drones are so much fun i don't even i i yeah. saw a video one night of like a guy taking a drone up into a, a white face hornet nest and he parked that sucker right underneath the hole where they were coming out and he just took the whole nest out it was great that's great but don't mess with hornets didn't anybody tell you that that's those are hey man are nasty insects i got stung already so i was well, you got what you what was coming to you. That's <laughs> what that is. premeditated premeditated all right, Bill. So uh, tell everybody who you are and where you're from and all that good stuff. My name is uh, Bill Badusky. I'm originally from Parma, Ohio, and I have been down in North Carolina for the last 15 years. I am currently the vice president of BMC NC Greensboro. Ta-da. 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 Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Welcome to the show tonight. So Thank you. Good. Pleasure. Pleasure. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, it was kind of crazy that I was talking to Scott, and then all of a sudden, I just get a 
text message from Scott, and it's a selfie of you two together in Cleveland. Like, I thought that was in, incredibly random. I'm everywhere. You are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so the, the story about how this all came about was uh, this past Saturday, we had our monthly club meeting for Beards of the Old Northwest, and uh, we're in the process right now of rebuilding the club. Um, you know, we started off in 2011 with a lot of people. The club grew real fast, had a lot of members, did a lot of stuff, and then throughout the years, it just kind of – dove a little bit you get people involved and then people leave and then it just got to a point earlier in this year where everyone was just like we, we're done we quit and like everyone just pretty much left and yeah we had to re- bring in new like president vice president and everything so we brought in um uh jason sparks is our new president i'm the vice president and wags is our secretary um and then once that was announced we had our original founding members of the club decide they wanted to come back to the club. And so we brought them back in too, because, you know, they kind of just a whole bunch of stuff happened. And I don't even really know, but so now everyone's kind of come back. We had, a, I mean, especially this last uh, meeting we had, we had a bunch of original guys that started the club there. And so I get there and Bill's there and I was like, Oh, who's this guy? And, and, uh, Brian Karn introduces me to you. And I was like, Oh, this is really cool. So <laughs> we sit down and we start talking about, stuff and you know just kind of talking about beard clubs and and in the meantime Aaron and I like said we were talking and we were talking on the way to the meeting and and I'm like well what are we going to do a show about on Tuesday he's like oh I had an idea but I, I can't remember what it was I'll text you later so as Bill and I were sitting down talking and you know we're kind of talking about like you know members and clubs and it's just like you know the membership's kind of down and doesn't seem like as many people are going to comps anymore and there's like an oversaturation and then all of a sudden my phone bings and it's Aaron. He's like, Oh, I remember what it was. I wanted to talk about like oversaturation of like comps and like all this stuff. So it was like synchronistic that it was like exactly what Bill and I were talking about. So I'm like, this is, this is what we're going to talk about this week because it's something that's affecting everyone in every club all across the United States. I don't know so much about Europe, um, but yeah, it just seems like there's there's every weekend, you know, as we say, there's a competition every weekend somewhere, yep. which that's cool. But then like we had last weekend, we had like five different major. Five or six. I counted six, I think, yeah. after it was all said and done. I mean, it's always for good cause. <clears throat> because everybody, you know, raises money and that's all really good. But then, you know, then you start seeing that, hey, there's nobody at each competition because there was freaking six on the same day. Like right, right. it's just too much of a good thing. Yeah. And know? then there's, and then there's going to be four or five next week. And then it's like, you can't go to them every week. Right. But you also have the participation. Cause we, we ran into this with worlds. I think it was last year and then possibly nationals this year where you have these huge competitions, especially it being stateside, where are you going to spend your money? Okay, you only have that bucket is only so full. So you have to pick and choose where you want to go. Um, I know a lot of people from our club want to go to comps that they've never been to before. You know, those those diehard clubs that we enjoy going to, you know, we love those comps. Um, I hope that our our comp is a destination comp that people enjoy going to year after year. Um, But you really have to pick and choose. And when there is so many choices You know, it it, it can't really be, you know, you can't, I guess, I guess if you're throwing the comp, you can't be offended when there's other things going on, you know, especially like worlds or nationals and stuff like that. But it is tough. You go and put a lot of time and effort into the competition and you want people to come and have a good time. You want to raise that money for charity and you want people to show up. Yeah. Now, and as we were kind of talking about that too, and, and going back a couple steps, like as Bill and I were talking about like, you know, bringing people into the club and everything, um, you know, that that's another issue, too, is, you know, the, the, the membership is down. So there, therefore, less people are going to be going to events. And Aaron and I have been noticing this over the past couple of years. It's like we go to comps like we especially saw it at the uh, Steel City competition last year where, you know, we went from a big venue to like a smaller one and it, it felt much nicer and more intimate. But the numbers were com- down majorly right. and like uh Aaron had said too like for his competition the numbers were down um everyone I talked to numbers are down numbers are down but 
what are we doing to bring new people in? And that's the big question here. It's how do we, as like all three of us, you know, we got a president and two vice presidents right here as key members of our clubs. What are we doing to bring new blood in? And as Bill and I were talking, Bill had all these like super great ideas and I'm going, God. And I was telling Aaron, I called him. I'm like, dude, you should hear this. This was great. I'm like, Oh, and I'm like, this is what we're talking about. This is great. Cause he has such great ideas on, on how to like get people, interested but then there's another step which th- right. that's what i that's what i was really interested in with what bill had to say so you can go ahead Take you you talk? yeah sir sorry aaron no you're yeah, i said that the comps are down because of oversaturation of aaron's beard because it's everywhere <laughs> so that, that might be a concern it is uh, but yep. but sorry. um scott when you and i talked i had talked about a two-prong approach OK, um, now I want to go and bring it to a three prong approach because I had a little time to think. OK, three prongs. Wow. It's a trident of ideas regarding beer competition. Oh, trident of ideas. You know, so go. Oh, that's something completely different. Three. Right, right. That's three. Yeah. Uh, three. Right. Right. One, two, three. Stop um, it, Aaron. This is a family show. A family oh, show. This is we have to be adults. Doing adult things for for this show. So, one, we're social clubs, but we're charitable organizations. Okay, so we are there. Don't make me get look. look I'm just like, oh, I don't know why that's coming. I have no idea. Why that is. Okay, so pre-K. Um, so you have you need to know what what is the mission of your club so when you meet new people what do you want to tell them oh yeah we like hang out and um you know we go to these beauty pageants for dudes and you should come okay so like knowing what your mission statement is knowing what your club's about okay so we're social clubs we're charitable organizations um Go and get out. I was talking to Scott about all the different events that he does. Um, like you have the Beards in the Barnyards coming up this this that, weekend. Yeah. This weekend. Okay. And I said, well, do you guys have a table there? That's a perfect opportunity. Not necessarily. Some clubs push more merch than others do, and that's fine. But have a table set up. Have So you can go and talk to people that are interested um, in, in possibly being part of this organization, but you need to have a message like what is in a nutshell, what is it that you do? Why would I want to come? Okay, so that's that's number one. But get the word out, set up that table at, at that event. Um, we have the opportunity, we have connections down here where we go to different sporting events. So we set up a table there. Some let us sell merch, some don't, but that's okay. It's getting the word out, okay? Also, so you have you have this event, people are coming up and they're interested and they want to talk to you. They want to hear about what what BMCNC is all about. Hey, that sounds fantastic. You know, I've I've been growing this beard for how long and da, 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 da. you know, and the wives are there. Oh, honey, yeah, you should do that. Please get out of the house. Okay. But what do you do when they come to the meeting? What do they do if it, you know, we have a monthly meeting, we also have a monthly pint night. So what do you do when they show up? You need to have people that are there you know, to, to, to spread the message, to, to greet them, to make them feel welcome. Um, I usually conduct our monthly meeting. So I have my agenda. I'm running through that. Um, I'm a social guy, but unfortunately I'm not the guy shaking hands at the front door when people come in. So I think it's really important to have those people that, that have that skill set to go and be welcoming, to go and introduce themselves, introduce them around, uh, the visitors around to the people there and and have them feel welcome from the get go and have this be something that they want to be a part of. Yeah, it's like it, it's like you you have your tiers of guys like, you know, you have your president, you have your vice president. Well, have your set like exactly like you said, have your sales guys, have your salesmen, right? Those are your guys that not, not necessarily. I mean, they could be the guys that are sitting at the table at these events. Like, you know, like, for example, like you said, are you taking a table? And I'm like, hmm, I'm like, OK, we could set a table up. We don't have to sell anything, but we can like write a mission statement out, make it on a, a little flyer, put a bunch yeah. of flyers on the table so people can just randomly take them, you know, make yeah. a big sign that says uh, like pretty much like, why do we beard or, you know, ask us what this is about or something. So you, so you can start that conversation with someone. You know, our, our, our newest catch, catchphrase that, that we have on our business cards and that we have been putting on our shirts and our merch is be hairy, do good. You know, we are charitable organizations. We're raising money for charity. So that is a big pool for a lot of people. The volunteer uh, um, 
opportunities that we have. Also, another thing is going and touching on your membership or people that come. Hey, it would be a good idea for you to be a part of this because then we could help your organization that you might be connected with or something, you know, the charity that you um, participate in at work. You know, we have the man- manpower. There's a bunch of guys here and and ladies that, that can go and put in those volunteer hours. So it, it kind of, you know, getting those people in the door and giving them a reason to want to come back and want to be a part of your organization, you know, the manpower. Hey, we, we you support us, we'll support you. Yeah. And that's like what you were saying too. It's like, okay, you get those people, you, 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 you get their interest, you get them to come to event or come to like one of your club meetings. Now, when they get to the club meeting and if you don't have those sales guys there, they're going to come in there and I've seen this and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. But you you see these people come in, you don't know who they are and they're just kind of sitting there and no one's talking to them. And then they just kind of like talk to a couple people maybe, and then they just up and leave. And then that's it. Never again. I came here and why would I want to come back? We we are very fortunate in Greensboro is that we have several people that are that forward greeting social. You know, hey, you have a beard. Hey, you're here at this meeting. Come check this out. You need to hear about what we're all about. Unfortunately, I'm not always that guy. I'm super social, hyper social, but I'm not that go forward. Hey, dude, you have a beard. Come talk to me. Um, but, you know, I'll talk to anybody about anything You know, after, you know, after that initial salesman is as salesman has has spoken to them um because you want those return people you want them to keep coming back and again why are we doing this um make that important to them too yeah i mean like like we have a couple uh, uh sarah willis writes that you know they have in rva they have specific events that they go to just like you say you go to the sporting events and we've done that in the past too where we've teamed up with like uh i think it was the ms foundation we did like a we we split a table with them because we're that's who the charity we were going to be working with so we're like all right we're going to this event let's split a table in fact let's split it three ways the cost of it we'll we'll take care of it we'll have we'll bring one of our guys who does an oil company he's going to sell his oils there then we're there to talk about the event coming up and what the beard club is and then the charity's there so it's you're you're almost like doing three things at one time and right I mean, it really helped because it's like if someone was there, they saw the MS Foundation, they'd come over and they'd be like, oh, well, these guys are helping us out to raise money. You know, it's the back scratching, like you're saying. It's like you don't. That, that's a great. I mean, that's a great strategy because even if I have no interest or I don't know of a local beard club, but I know I need to put beard oil or, you know, um, products in my beard. Um, so I'm going to come to that table and, oh, you're here. Let me do what, what is this? What is what is this club? What is Beards of the Old Northwest? What is that? Um, you know, so so you have that that shared table is a great, great idea. Um, but just getting getting your faces out, getting the word out, um, going to different events, even things that uh, you wouldn't necessarily think. Um, but I, I really like that idea, the sharing the table idea. If you've got a farmer's market or something and somebody goes and, sh- uh, you know, sells sells product. Why, why not? Hey, dude, can I rent, you know, two feet of your your table just so I can talk about the local club and talk about what's coming up? Well, another thing that we do is and, and this is a cheap one. You can go to Vistaprint. You get like about a thousand business cards made up of and you can put your mission statement like like we yeah. do. Beards of the Old Northwest about, you know, family, um, uh, charity and and brotherhood. And yeah. you write a little bit, you put your website on there. And, you know, if we were out and like, like I went to this uh, concert festival a couple of weeks ago and there was tons of guys with beards there and I took cards with me and I was like, Hey, you know, we're from Cleveland. We're in, in the general area. If you guys are ever interested in coming, you know, to talk and hang out with more guys with beards, you know, come on up. That's how I ended up getting sucked into the whole thing. Cause I didn't know anything about beard clubs. I went to an event and there was this one guy, Neil Sanchez, and he comes up to me. He's like, Hey, why don't you, we're doing this thing. He gives me a card and he's like, we're doing an event. He's like, why don't you come and check it out? And that's all it took, you know? And then I met the greatest people in my entire life. And that's, I mean, my origin story is similar. I mean, Brian called me, um, cause I've known Brian for about 27 years and he's like, uh, what are you doing this weekend? What are you doing for St. Patrick's day? I, I don't know, dude, what's going on. I'm coming down. There's a beard comp in, uh, in Greensboro. Um, I want you to come check this out. And I did, 
you know, clean face sideburn guy that I was. And uh, I'm like, this is a bunch of really cool people. I mean, everybody's really chill, really, you know, this is this is a good group of guys and what they're doing is for a great cause. And, um, you know, I was hooked. So I think it was a month or two later I started going to meetings and ta-da, here I am, you know, vice president. Yeah, Greg Deal says some of their recognition comes from parades, volunteering, uh, simply being out in the public and being an example, fundraising, et cetera. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's exactly it. It's finding ways to get involved in, I mean, there's so many, all you got to do is look on Facebook and events. There's so many different events like that, that you could just go to, walk around, and hand stuff out. Oh, sure. Social media is important too. you know, have a good social media person that's putting stuff on there, you know, so when you go and see, hey, you know, uh, pages you might like, you know, beard clubs in the area or, you know, other things that are going on products that you might be interested in. So, I mean, the, the, the opportunities are there to get the word out. It's just getting the word out. And then what do you do with it? You know, once people come up or once people show interest, now, I think that is really important. Now, Aaron, right. do you guys do anything like... What? That's what they do. Look at him. We uh, so we we don't get out as much as we should, but uh, we have a couple guys that are really getting out. Uh, I know James and Tyler both just absolutely hand out cards like crazy. Um, I, I live like three hours from Charleston, so like really going to events here isn't really going to draw anybody to Charleston to you know, go to a beard meeting or anything like mm. that. But I mean, we, we actually have drawn, I don't know, a couple people from Aiken that, you know, have joined the club and stuff like that. But that's, that's really what we do. I know James really gets out and hits up. There's Charleston always has festivals and they just walk around with cards. That's it. Yeah. Walk around with cards and just hand them out and talk to everybody. And, and that's that's really what we do. Like even for our competition, I feel like our competition really has uh, a lot of local people that come out to it. And and most beard competitions, when you go, it, it's you know beard people and their wives or their buddies, mm-hmm. not really right. some dude. Like oh, I heard about this thing, and and that's that's one thing that Paul really pushed on all of us was get the community involved. So I mean, not necessarily for uh, bearding in general we've talked about it and I think we're, we're kind of headed that direction to get just on a, a normal basis people involved. But for our competition, we, we absolutely pound the pavement and put out flyers and talk to people in the community and really try to get the community to come out to our competition and more people come to your competition. That's more money for your charity. And, and that's, you know, we, we it, it's a brotherhood and, and a sisterhood. And there's a lot of people that are involved that, hey, I'm going to go down and check this comp because, you know, my buddies are putting it on. And that's super. And that's great. And that keeps the machine rolling. But also local support. I mean, we go well, there's a couple there's a couple of people. Matt Drew, um, part of our club. I mean, he pounds the pavement. He's worn out shoes. Um, pound on the pavement, put, um, you know, we get flyers that we're putting up and he goes and he looks for sponsors. And I mean, he is, he's definitely the linchpin and really getting the word out. And we do get a lot of people from, you know, from the the street, not necessarily involved with our club that come to our events, um, you know, and letting people know that you work with and friends you, Hey, come check this out. I know you don't have a beer, but this is a good time. It's a good time. You need to come check this out. Yeah, I, and then that's like our in in the chat room right here. Uh, my friend Baldface Josh. I mean, he's doesn't have a, any facial hair, and I've drug him to a bunch of these events. And it's like, I it was like really like hard to get him to come to the first couple. And once he got to know some people and got to see yeah. what it was really about, he's like, "Wow, these are cool." And then so I'd be like, "Hey, man, what are you doing this weekend? You know, hey, let's go for like a five hour car drive and." And we just have the greatest time, even though he has nothing. I mean, as he talks to people, like, I mean, he's a, he's a teacher too. I mean, I'm sure you guys would have tons to talk about, but that's the thing is when you go to these meetings, you don't just talk about, it's not all about beards. Right. You find out, you know, you talk to different people about different things and then you find out that you have like tons of shit that's in common and then it just strengthens that bond. Yeah, that's what I, I was talking to you about that, Scott. I said, I'm not going to go and talk to you about beards for an hour and a half. I will talk to you about anything else in the world. You know, um, 
but I mean, there's there's guys that 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 that's their skill set. That's what they're really really good in. And and some people do want to talk about that. Um, we've had a couple people that really you know um, the discussions do come up. What do you use? Where do you go? Um, you know, where do you get your haircut? Where do you get your beard trimmed? At? What products do you use? I mean, those conversations do come up. But there's a lot of other common ground that we have at these competitions and it is a blast. I mean, it really, really is a good time and we're doing it for charity. We're doing it for a good cause. Yeah. Like, uh, Tisha chicken bread says for whiskerinas, when you tell someone you have a beard comp, they are pretty, pretty amazed that women are doing this and, uh, it's most unusual hobby. Yeah. Cause I mean, you, you have to explain that one. It's like, when I when I tell people I'm like, I'm going to a beard contest and they're like oh this is really cool and you start explaining like all the different categories and I'm like eh, and then there's women's categories and then boy their minds are blown like what, and what? I, I just I have and I say it every time <laughs> I've I've had the privilege of them seeing our event for the last three years and I have the absolute utmost uh, respect for the whiskerinas because of the time and effort that they put into what they do you know. All right, I'm ready to go on stage. Whereas, I mean, they're putting hours and hours and hours into this, and they need to be unique and creative and something new. And you know, that's already been done before. Or, you know, so I really have a lot of respect for this green. Well, I think too that a lot of the draw to competitions is between the whisk arena categories and the freestyle categories because those are the yeah. most interesting ones, and oh, right. you know, those tend to be the ones that are most. Uh, a lot of competitors and, and right. it's, it's real competition. I mean, I'm, I'm in the six and under category, you know, there's, you go to a comp, you know, Charles, there's 30 dudes, you know, ours, there's, there's 20, 25 people in the category. It's a, it's a dog for the judges, but um, you know, yeah, those, those are, those are definitely draws. Yeah. So this, this competition that I took Josh to, it was the, uh, what the heck it was in Southern Ohio. Um, and they had a white trash category and I'm like, dude, you gotta, you gotta do this. And he's like, I'm not going to join it. Cause if, what if I win, then I'll be known as the guy with the best white trash mustache. Right. So he wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, you guys do, um, uh, Brazil Northwest does the, the shittiest tattoo, right? Yep. Isn't yeah. that, yeah. I, 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 that's unique. I like that. And then, uh, one of the guys actually got a tattoo that said shittiest tattoo right on his shoulder. Which that was right. funny. I can't remember who that was. I think that was, uh, uh, Rado. But yeah, so I mean, a lot of people had a lot of fun because then it was like with that category, it was like next year everyone went that had, they had a year to go out and get the worst tattoos they possibly could get yeah. it's for that category. Ah, uh, the backyard money made with that category. Right? Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, I mean, and and there you go again. There's another thing that you know, being a club, you come up with creative categories to have at your events to entice more people to come. And, and, you know, for what what I do, you know, as as a pre-K teacher, I love that junior beard uh, category. Love it. Those kids are so into it. Um, and, and it's awesome. And you make these these are family events. People are always asking me, is it is it family friendly? And I usually tell them, well, at least the first half is. No. <laughs> but um, absolutely. You have you have the whiskerina. You have the you have the junior beard. You have these categories. It is a family friendly event. Yeah. And that's, uh, we were just like you said, we were also talking, we, uh, a competition that we got asked to help organize and put together in a small little town outside of Mansfield. And we came up with one of the ideas, um, like going to like one of the local schools and like getting together with like the art teacher and be like, Hey, why don't you, could we somehow tie in a like creative kids category where you spend like maybe one day with the kids, like building a beard or we could get together. We buy a whole bunch of like the guys in the club could buy a whole bunch of stuff. And then at the event we could do like two hours before and each guy teams up with a kid and they sit there and they help them make a beard. And you're, you know, so you're introducing these kids uh, to what it is and you're giving them something fun and crafty to do. And then you can get them up on stage, you know, right. and everyone can be showcased and that, you know, that's a seed planted for the future too. It's making it a truly family friendly yeah. event. I mean, really, truly family friendly. And um, I've had people that I've invited from work that came and, and stood in the audience like, uh, some of these people look kind of scary. And then, you know, just making comments and talking to the people around them, like, no, this is a really cool bunch of people. These, this is a really fun, pleasant event. 
Um, and it just, you know, if you haven't tried it, get out there, find a competition and go, you'll meet some really, really cool people. I know, uh, uh, 20, 43 bazillion people are watching right now. That's a lot. 43 bazillion. Wow. That is, that is, long. I just see it's live 480506. Oh, seven. Anyways. Um, no, but, uh, I also like the, I mean, we're a pretty straightforward, um, competition. You know, we moved it. It's usually on St. Patrick's Day in Greensboro. We moved it back a week because of other conflicts. We're probably going to stick with that. We like the the timing. Um, but there are some, um, what am I trying to think? Um, like unique, uh, um, like what's the, like the wrestling one or the, the oh, you themes. Know, themes. Thank you very much. Themed, you know, theme competitions that, that um, I have not gone to any of those yet, but those are really, really interesting. Um, and that's something I definitely would like to do in the future. Awesome. Okay. Well, we definitely want to thank you, Bill Baduski oh, from Sandusky. <laughs> but dude, I, like what a treat it was to meet you the other day. Like what, I mean, I would have not thought that this would have unfolded the way it did with you and I, like, I feel like, and, and you've, you are super like, and, and this goes even for me to anyone out there that's watching this show, just like you did to me. If anyone ever needs any help with ideas, want to sit and talk about different strategies or whatever, we're here. We're all here for you. Absolutely. Um, you know, you, you can email us at, uh, or message us at talking beards at Facebook or whatever the heck you do. Just send us a regular old Facebook message yeah. to, to our person. I yeah. mean, any Scott, uh, sit down. We've had a lot of long discussions about, you know, clubs needing sponsorship money and stuff like that and different mm -hmm. ideas on how to raise money to put on your said competition and stuff like that. Like some, some competitions, they, they literally pay out of pocket for the competition and just hope that yeah. it has enough, you know, people show up to pay themselves back and give money to charity. Like there's, right. there's strategies that you don't have to do that. You just have but to circling, circling way, way back around you, your membership, talk to your membership. Hey, does anybody, you know, talk to the companies that they work for? Is there a charity? Are they interested in sponsoring us? You know um, we try to go and have, Everybody, you know, bring in at least one raffle prize or a sponsor. Try to talk to the people that you know work uh, work with. We have connections with breweries and concert clubs and, you know, um, all kinds of businesses in the Greensboro area. And, you know, Charlotte it does as well in us, Statesville. Um, but it, it's, it's, using, it's using the connections that your membership have and using the skill set of your people to go out and raise that money or get those connections or get those sponsors. Well, I'll tell you what, this, this is going to have to be a part two episode. So maybe down the road, we'll do an oh, yeah. episode all about like getting sponsorships for your events yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, I think that would be a really great, great uh, topic and, and all, people could really learn a lot from that. So, and the thing yeah. is, is it, it doesn't need to apply to just beard clubs. It could be, you could, it, you could be like a, a needlepoint club and it's the same thing it's it's you right. can apply the same concepts to that yep. to you know do those things so but bill thank you so much we will definitely yeah, have to we're, we're booking this one now already we're going to do another episode with you and we're going to talk about sponsorships yeah. and stuff like that so thumbs up it was an absolute pleasure i really appreciate you guys having me um and and scott it was wonderful talking to you a couple of days ago and uh a, a ron it is always a pleasure to talk to you yes, sir. Um, give give your wife a kiss for me but um thank you thank you for having me and i look forward to talking to you guys again thank you all right thank you very much bill we shall talk to you soon and good luck to you thank you enjoy your evening all right you too okay goodbye hey hey you did a great job of that interview. You're such a good interviewer person. Well, I was like, I'm like, Aaron, where are you? I'm right here. You, oh. you just, you, y'all were just, you don't need me. <laughs> to interview. You don't need me. Hey, do. I, I'm just like watching the beard caster live. It's amazing. <laughs> Jeez. Well, what? Josh wants what? to know who's buying the beers and whiskey. I don't know what that means, but that sounds great. Um, Ball face Josh with all the great comments. Yeah, so, okay, so now this leads us to trivia, but before we get to trivia, we have, what do we have? What do we have? <laughs> ooh, ooh, give me one second. Yeah, what do we have tonight? What, we have, what time is it? 
Oh my gosh. It's it's that time for uh Hot Carl's joke of the week. <laughs> Hot Carl's joke of the week with lasers. All right. Uh-huh. This is probably gonna be the best one ever. Best one. Best one. Ever. All right. What's the difference between pink and purple? Um uh, let me think about that one. You know what? I don't know, Aaron. What is the difference between pink and purple? The grip. <laughs> and that was Hot Carl's joke of the week. Thank yeah, you. Brought to you by what's this? <laughs> I don't know, but here it comes again. <laughs> so stupid. Ugh, you're Thank st- you, Hot Carl. But uh, uh, all right, so now we're getting into trivia, and tonight's trivia was prepared by the one and only super lovely, super amazing Sarah Willis. Super amazing Sarah Willis. That should be her new name. Yeah, so tonight's trivia is sponsored by Sarah Willis, Honest Amish, and Talking Beards. Awesome. So we have so if 10 t- questions. So if the questions suck, go after her. Yeah, it's, it's Sarah wrote these, so make sure you... Uh, you know, write her some hate mail and send it to one two three Main Street uh, in uh, Willis Sarah Land, Willis, Pennsylvania. That's I think that's where she lives. Sarah Willis, Sarah Willis Lane. I think. You know, you you can get it. Just just hit her up on you know, MySpace. So, uh, it seems like this trivia tonight has a theme of movies and or uh you know, movie characters and things of such so if everybody's ready we'll just hop on into it aaron i'm ready what? i'm ready i have them right here look at this Pow. awesome i'm ready. ready i'm ready i'm ready too so <gasps> oh, wait 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 look who's here chris, chris! Yay! Oh, hi. Hey! howdy y'all christopher how are you doing what's up wow this is this is breaking news right here. Yeah, this is breaking news. Christopher breaking Odom news. is in the house. He is. He is. Uh, he is here. Um, Chicken Bread <sighs> says Magnum PI. He's already answering the first question. We haven't even asked it yet. Shut the heck up. Wow. Uh. Huh. Okay. Question number one. Natalie D. Johnston is keeping score. She is ready to go. True. Oh, that was question one. And she has Larry. So Larry's going to help her uh, spell check. Is that question one? Stuff. No. Oh. Um, okay. Question number one. What actor with famous facial hair starred in Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, The Cannonball Run, and Boogie Nights? Is it The Cannonball Run or is it Cannonball Run? Uh, it's listed as The Cannonball Run. Or is it The Cannonball Run? The it Cannonball is. Run or The Cannonball Run? The Cannonball Run. Circle Beard. Circle Beard. Anthony. Question number one. Winner. Uh, Justin Baker answered first. Uh-oh. Nat- Natalie's what? thinking she's going to... No. Justin Baker said B-U-R-T. Jason Schaefer answered see, see, we're we're going we're going off our screen. Our screen is the proper order. We discuss this every week. Our screen's right. Everyone else's is wrong. So you don't keep Justin yes, but not before. Anthony Simonic is the first one to show up on our list with the proper answer. Correct. Okay. Congratulations, Anthony. <laughs> May the <laughs> force be first with place. you. All right. Uh, so was Burt Reynolds Magnum PI? Yes. Wow. Oh, no. like Tom Selleck. Oh yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> They're the same person. They almost Everybody. are. Okay. Anyway, sorry. They have mustaches. So when he said that, I was like, "What?" But yeah, what? you're right. What? Pizza roll tacos. What? Question number two. I'm going to change the wording, Sarah. I'm sorry. On Star Trek, the original series, the episode Mirror, Mirror 
featured blank with a malicious goatee. What character had a malicious goatee in Ch the episode Mirror, Mirror? Chewbacca. False. Oh. No, Tisha, you were wrong. Tisha, you were wrong. Sean Logie, you are correct. Who's spook? Way to go, circle beard. Get it yeah. wrong. Sean Logie. <laughs> <clears throat> Con. <laughs> that was funny. You're funny. You shut up. Nice guys, DG. Question number three. Three. What series grew in popularity after Jonathan Frank Frakes grew a beard for the second season? What series grew in popularity after Jonathan Frakes grew a beard for the second season? Was it Alf? Uh, it was not Alf or 90210. It was Star Trek The Next Generation. Was it? Yeah. Brian Appa Daka. Brian Polka Dotted Alpaca. Congratulations. Will and Grace. Yes, it was Will and Grace. <clears throat> Shut up, Logie. <laughs> Question number four. Four. What Disney movie was the first to feature at least one main character with facial hair? What Disney movie? was the first to feature at least one main character with facial hair. This one's going to be difficult or not. Does the lion king count? Nope. I'm going off of... These are Sarah Willis questions and answers. So, that's what we go off of. So, y'all have to guess what Sarah put. Robbie Holson back. Snow White. <laughs> That's what Sarah said. So, Snow White. Wait a minute. Yep. Hold on. Wait. Did someone else say Snow White before? Oh yeah, Brett Maxfield said it. Oh my bad. Like forty, job, like forty-five on, minutes. You're supposed to say of, Come the, on, Brett. of the Maxfield coffee family. Scott, you're not listening to me. What? You're supposed to say, "Come on, Brett." Come on, Brett. Yeah. Thank you. Come on, Brett. <laughs> Come on, Brett. Come on, Brett. See? See? Do you see what we did Come there? On, Come on, Brett. Look at that. Come on, Brett. <laughs> okay. Question number, number five. Sanko. What is the color of Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber? Huh. Hmm. If you're not first, you're last. That's right. That is we just wrong. watched that the other day. Burrito. No, that is wrong. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Robbie. Yeah, there it is. Robbie. Good job, Robbie. What's the score, Natalie? A, I'm not seeing Robbie dance. a bunch of people have one. Yeah. I guess I'm not seeing Robbie because I'm not I don't know, but we see it. Question number six. Which actor refused to shave for his role as a Batman villain? Which actor refused to shave for his role as a Batman villain? I have the person's name and his character. So just character will not work. You need to put his real birth birth name. I know who the character is. Oh, there it is. Logie. Where, where, Sean Logie. Cesar. Cesar. Romero. Cesar. Yeah. Cesar. Isn't that like cat food or something? 
Yeah, Cesar Romero. Yeah, that's uh, cat food. It's like they go ding on the glass and the cat comes running. Yeah, that that's definitely it. <laughs> it's for I the fancy it's cats. That's Sheba. Oh, that's sorry. <laughs> God, that's not even close. I was like, what the hell are you even talking about? That's what we feed our cats. That's what you're supposed to say. Sheba. Yeah, we put the food in the glass. It's like ding, ding, ding. And then the cats come running. You're so and stupid. Then he knocks over the glass and eats it off the floor. Fancy feast. <laughs> Is it? That's where Matson feeds his cats. Yeah, because he's rich. She's a I'm crazy right, cat lady. It's a fancy feast. Whatever. It's he's the a- same crap. It's all just ground up hot dogs and andrew's a crazy cat lady he is a crazy cat lady he just got his third cat oh my god brought to you by natalie d johnston i do believe she picked it out yeah you deserve the best you deserve fancy feast made him and named it and then made him keep it (laughs) truth yeah see question number seven question number seven In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which of the Avengers has the one, wait, which one of the Avengers was the one introduced with facial hair? First as in movie release date and not timeline within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That question was (laughs) super confusing, Sarah Willis. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, well, Wee Wee is not a character. Sorry. Wee Wee. It is Iron Man. I see Logue. Oh, no, wait. I think somebody was in front of. Kate got it. Yeah. Catherine. Former. Cole Apodaca. Former hot sister. Where Kate. Polka dotted. Um, alpaca. She was demoted or. Yeah, what, she what was. Happened? I told you she was. Oh. We demoted her after this weekend. Oh. Sorry, you're demoted. You're demoted. Polka dotted alpaca. Apparently. Oh, 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 she's sad. I know. Former. Hmm. So rude. How wooed. How wooed. <laughs> Number eight. How wooed. The beards of the dwarves in The Hobbit were made from what kind of hair? Was it public hair? The beards of the dwarves in The Hobbit were made from what kind of hair? Public? Did you know this? Like, what were they made from to make the movie? I don't know. I You know everything I know. The beards of the dwarves what in The Hobbit were made from what kind of hair? Was it dwarves? No. It is not horse. Pony hair. It is not LOL hair. It is not co hair. It's not cat hair. What the heck is co hair? I don't know. What's L-O- a L-O- hair? LOL hair? I don't know what LOL hair is. Sarah oh, Willis, man. where did you where did you learn this answer to this question? It's what I said. Short and curly. Public hair. Duh. Uh public hair. No, it's not public hair. Whore hair? No. <laughs> Sloth hair. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Matson says Gerbil, whatever a gerbil is. Not a camel. Not Was a, dog. a la llama? La nope. llama llama mad at mama? Butt hair. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, big hair. No. Nope. Pigs don't have hair. That's why they roll in the mud. Hamster hair. No. Damn. It is a three-letter word. Pig? Nope. Cement. No. Elephants. <laughs> no. It was. It was not human hair. It was not. That. That, that was a good question. Good. Not emu. Emu's a bird and their feathers, dummy. Not elk. Not a dolphin, not an eel, not a dog. Cow? Best fur. Nope. Not a cow. I don't I think Sarah just made this up. Gnu? 
ask Gary. Oh, this is a good one. Three letter <laughs> ear hair. Ear hair. <laughs> that is also incorrect. Damn. You're trying we real good, Brandy. There it is. Brett got it. Come on, Brett. Where? Yak hair. Yak. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Who kn- Who Brett knew? did. Brett knew. Good job, Brett. Question number nine. Charlie Chaplin oh my made God. what controversial film that made fun of another toothbrush mustache sporting fellow? Really? Really? What? That's what I'm just saying, really. Oh. Charlie Chaplin made what controversial film that made fun of another toothbrush mustache sporting fellow what is the name of the film what's the name of the film not the character yeah. it says charlie chaplin made what controversial film that made fun of another toothbrush mustache sporting fellow so what is the name of the film but the person was that i assume that's i, w- I would assume yeah that's right there you go she just she put fair. the dictator, but I don't think that was right yet. That it's the dictator, great. that's a Sasha Cohen yeah, movie. No, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was confused about in the beginning. But yeah, yeah, Jason Schiffer from uh, Montreal won. Anthony Simonic Circlebeard is not that old. But yet his daughter's getting married. All right, who who's in the lead right now? Sean and Brett both have two. Oops, Sarah Willis got the title wrong again. Oh, good job, Sarah Willis. So, yeah, so I think this is pretty much between Brett and Lug. But I guess anybody else can can just mess the whole thing up and tie them. All right, so question number 10. Which actress sported a partial beard? In American Horror Story Freak Show. Hmm. Which actress sported a partial beard in American Horror Story Freak Show? Not me. Chair? Was it Chair? Was not Chair. Do you believe in love after love? Good night, gents. So long, Circle Beard. See ya. It was not Lady Gaga. Gaga. Gaga, 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 Gaga. Do you know how you wake Lady Gaga up? <laughs> you poke her in her face. You that poke finally... her face. P- p- poke her face. Sean Logan got it. It was Kathy Bates. Where? Pow. Oh, Kathy Bates. Come on, Brett. All right, there, there it is. Loogie won. Sean Loogie. Jamie Fox. Loogie and Associates. Jamie Fox. So I didn't I, I didn't pick Jason Schaefer who's winning from last week. Jason Schaefer didn't win last week. Did. No. Robbie Holsenback did. Robbie Holsenback, yeah. Uh Jason Schaefer, will you be in South Dakota? He will. No, he won't. He'll be judge he said judge. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get you yourself, buddy you just uh let me know what you want and i will make it happen we'll make it happen so yeah so thank you for tuning in tonight and congratulations to sean loogie from uh the detroit, detroit area kind of up there it's in canada uh, above canada yeah uh, do we have anything else, or that was that was pretty much it? Well, I just want to thank uh, Sarah Willis for the doing the questions. Um, we've had a couple other people reach out too, so um, if you want to help out, more the merrier. I mean, just yeah. uh, so we can uh, not do these same questions over and over. So yeah, uh, Sarah's got a few uh, episodes of questions written. Any anything anybody wants to help out with, you just you know you want to. Do anything cool, make us some stuff to give away. You want to sponsor a segment, you want to just reach out. You yep. can put it on the BS Buttons Beard Bulletin Board of Butts or whatever. You can reach out to me or Scott. And uh, yeah. So I'm Aaron D. Johnson. 
I'm here every week. Thank you for tuning in. And Scott Sakura. Yeah, my name is uh, Scott Sakura. Uh, no, I, I was pretending like I was frozen. I, uh, <laughs> no, I did really good. I was like holding oh, perfectly yeah. still. Uh, I do a podcast called Talking Beards with the Beardcaster because that's me, the Beardcaster. Uh, it's a podcast pretty much uh, for those of you who can't watch. Yeah, Christopher coming back soon, hopefully. Um, but uh, it's a rebroadcast of this this episode so uh uh, i just posted the uh american ninja warrior episode the other day uh crystal's episode will be coming out in a couple days and then this episode will be up hopefully by next week uh and you can wherever you subscribe to podcasts at if you listen to podcasts just uh type in talking beards and you should be able to find this so you can uh tons of episodes but uh also want to thank bill for joining us um great conversation tonight i hope you guys uh can go back and watch this again listen to it again and get some good ideas and stuff like that and like we said before if you guys have any questions you guys need any help with club related stuff um we're the guys to reach out to um we are more than willing to help anyone uh try to get their club up and running better smoother get more people involved um get some more activity Uh, you know, we just want to help the beard community be better and bigger and just make more of an impact out there. I mean, though we are in ways, but we know we could do more and we could be better. So please feel free to reach out to Aaron, myself, or Bill. Um, you can message us at talking beards, but don't forget to go over to Facebook, uh, slash talking beards, subscribe, like the show, uh, hit that little bell. So, you know, when we're going live each week, Don't forget to also go over to the BS Button Beard Bulletin Board. If you have anything cool that you want to share with the community, like a competition, or if you guys are doing some sort of fundraiser, let us know. We'll talk about it next week's show. Um, Other than that, that's about it. So um, check us out uh, at TalkingBeards.com. It's not really too much over there. There's more stuff about us at TheBeardCaster.com. So go over there, check it out, and thank you all so much for – this is one of our best shows again. I mean – each week the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and more people are coming and watching. I mean, not too bad for a subpar show with a, two narcissists on it. So pretty subpar. I know. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Yes. Thank you everyone. And we'll see you next week and stay tuned for scenes from next week's uh, exciting episode. I got that. I landed that one. Good. Day. Got it. Ciao. Ciao everyone. Thank you. We hope you really enjoyed this episode. Make sure you go over to thebeardcaster.com to subscribe to the podcast. Also, don't forget to go to talkingbeards.com every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to watch us live. If you want to interact with the show, make sure you go to facebook.com slash talkingbeards. There you can interact live with the show and post anything you want in the BS Button Beard Bulletin Board. Make sure you do that so we know what's going on in the community and we can report it to you. Thank you all for checking out the program today. Make sure you stay tuned for next week's super awesome episode. Until then, stay awesome and we'll see you guys later. Ciao.